we're introducing somebody. We're shouting out names, and everyone's like, "Well, the fuck is this, <laughs> man? What the fuck are you talking about?" All right, okay. So let me introduce you to my friend Katrina Haggerty. Right? Let's just break it down from uh, my perspective and our perspective. Is quite simply, uh, quite simply, a very good friend of ours. Right? Um, Thank I went you. to college with her. I <laughs> we went through a couple of bizarre ass parties with her. We had um a lot of connecting stories quite simply by working through the hotel industry. When I said hotel industry, Katrina has worked through the cruise ship industry. We're talking nine hard labor years. I know I make it sound like prisoner or whatever, but um Sometimes it's not like that. Exactly. A lot of people don't even make it past the one and a half year or two year mark. Well, not just that. It's just like the the contract of four months. So I spent yes. nearly nine years of my life there. So boom, boom. Well, fair play to you. I mean, that that that, that takes a lot of dedication. I mean, um, what part of it made you uh, keep driving on? Was it the routine, or was it quite simply you were enjoying it at the time, or were the benefits that good? Uh, what pushed you to go on? Because at the like, I regret nothing in life. The one thing I uh, one thought I would regret is not working on a cruise ship. I could have saved myself a lot of hotel work mm-hmm. if, at the age of eighteen, nineteen, twenty, whatever you know, that that those that idiot age. If I could have traveled the world, saved a fucking whole bunch of money, learned a shitload, and then, you know, gotten on with my life. What pushed you on? Well, I suppose Kat? for me, um, I was 21. I wanted to travel. I didn't know where I wanted to go. And you're talking back in the 90s now. You're talking mid 90s mm-hmm. here. Mm-hmm. And I was working in County Clare at the time with a really nice guy called Gary and he told me that he worked on the cruise ships which kind of gave me a really good emphasis on the whole thing and um, he had said to me you know why don't you try the cruise ships so to cut the long story short I tried for Disney, P&O Cruises, Carnival, QE2 and a lot of my interviews came back for the QE2 and then Mm -hmm. eventually got on board as a waitress yeah. In 1998, so I joined on the 13th of March 1998. Wow, we still got all those dates. Man. Yeah, and it's, uh, it's but, a date uh, I really remember. It's but very doesn't that just signify how important these events actually are? Absolutely, because they're so heavily set in yeah. your memory. And I will never forget the day I joined the ship. It was in Madeira, uh, just off the coast of Portugal. So I flew from London to Madrid, Madrid to Madeira and I joined the ship and I remember looking up at it I'm like going oh my god what am I doing here joined the ship and it was crazy it was just unbelievable it was an amazing experience and it was was some of the best times of my life it was fantastic Um, travelled around the world did seven world cruises seen a lot of things places embraced an awful lot of cultures which made me a wider person at the end of the day and um came back being really cool in terms of Mm -hmm. embracing life in general do you know what i mean it was an amazing experience met some of the most fantastic people that i lived with worked with that I have friends for life and seen some amazing places in, in the world. I can only imagine, even though the stop-offs or the, the short time was so relatively short, but the thing is, you were there for so many years. Mm-hmm. You got a repeated ring around yeah. through uh, certain um, routes. Yeah, and the yeah. thing is as well, a lot of people kind of go, oh my God, you've been to, I've, like, I've been to Mauritius lots of yes, times. yes. And it got to the point where I actually took it for granted, which I really shouldn't well, have. Yeah. I really shouldn't have. And I'm like, oh, God, we're in Mauritius again. While there's so many people out there that's never been there. And I really mm-hmm. took it for granted. There was one time I actually took it for granted. And I went, Cat, seriously, you're in one of the most beautiful islands in the yeah, world. Yeah. And you're taking this for granted. Do not do this. Do you know, yes. go out and enjoy Went to the beautiful beaches, lovely places to visit around Mauritius, and I loved every second of it. 
That's amazing. Yeah, it is it's amazing. Absolutely amazing. And the thing is, I'm sure you had some absolutely fantastic stories to. <laughs> Some, I could tell a some lot. Years, I was going to say some you can publish, some you can publish. Yes, I could but, tell a lot of stories. But uh, on those uh, routes or whatever, um, if you went on um, <laughs> one leg, right, mm-hmm. uh, as some um, stewards might do or mm-hmm. whatever, and then get off, but seeing that you did nine years, mm-hmm. is it a case of where you, like, I mean, you might, dock at St. Mauritius or whatever you can't get off at the time because you have to set for mm-hmm. you know um, you know VIP dinner but due to your extended time or whatever you had an opportunity to pretty much see every um, docking yeah well you see the, um, a lot of those ports that I've been to were like on world cruises so the world cruise would obviously start um, at the yeah. beginning of January mm-hmm. and it work its way through to the end of May Right. Um, we do a lot of transatlantics throughout the year, so it's mm. New York, Southampton, Southampton, New York, and they were pretty pretty tough going. So you're you're an hour back every night till you go to New York, mm. and then you're an hour yeah. forward and you go back to Southampton. Yeah. So the nights, and this is so crazy, and I can't believe I'm saying this, the nights that you get the hour back would be the nights that you should be in bed and join the extra hour mm-hmm. in bed. Mm-hmm. We weren't. We were in the crew bar having a party and having our best times ever. While the nights we were all going forward, yeah. we were all like going to bed and, and, and relaxing and stuff, you know, that's and missing the hour. And it was crazy, but everybody done it. That's, that's, that's absolutely nuts. It <laughs> is nuts, but that's I mean, what everybody I mean, did. Like on a, on, a, on a flight, you overskip hours. Mm-hmm. I mean, we're talking time zones or whatever. Yeah. But a... Um, I mean, I'm not uh, disparaging uh, cruise ships or anything, but at the speed that they would go on, mm. uh, in terms of uh, flight times or whatever, they're trudging along. But mm. the thing is, they're trudging along quite <laughs> steadily through time zones. Yeah. So this is why I find this absolutely amazing and hilarious. It's like, literally, you're hanging out and you're just simply rolling through time zones. Yeah, exactly. So it's you make the best of it. Especially when it would come to the likes of New Year's Eve. Yeah. So you would be celebrating the UK and Ireland's New Year's Eve, which would be eight o'clock in the evening. So yeah. everybody would go out to the to the dispense bar in the main galley and yeah. have our champagne and hi, well, happy New Year. Then you'd have another New Year, which would be at eleven o'clock, which would be Southern South Pacific time. Yeah. Yeah. And then you'd have another New Year at the 12 <laughs> o'clock now. So you'd be celebrating three New Year's. But what about the staff that had to uh, go through two New Year's? Yeah. That was in the middle of the shift. So did, yeah. did they have to go in and pretend to be all. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. And, yeah. Because the, all the other guests just woke up at that time. Exactly. Too. And it's just, it's crazy. People are going to bed. People are getting yes. a party and people are doing whatever. And it's just, you're on the middle of the sea. And you're celebrating so many different time zones yes. that it was it was crazy, but it, it was an amazing experience, absolutely amazing experience. Okay, Kat, um, tell me, um, your uh, your your greatest experience, and I'm just talking about the greatest party, the greatest event, the I don't know, watching the Sydney fireworks or some shit like that. No, no, what I'm talking about, it, it could be personal, it could be it, it be uh, close knit, it could be um, just a team event or whatever it may be. Uh, what is your greatest, warmest memory? The one thing that made you say "cruise ship for life" kind of thing, yeah. you know. I don't, What's the one thing? Well, I suppose for me would be I did a lot of work for the crew. Um, I DJed a lot. Um, yes. so work in the crew bar, and you did it all. Yeah, as well. yeah, and <laughs> a lot of the nights we just had a reunion there last weekend in Southampton, and a lot of the pictures that were put up on our Facebook page was yeah. of nights out where crew members were having the time of their lives, while I was stuck in the DJ box. DJ and the music for the party. Yeah, yeah. And a lot of those pictures I was never in, but I was in the DJ box. But I <laughs> could see how many nights and how many different parties. We did like sail away parties. We did like under the sea parties. We did Valentine's yeah. parties. We yeah. did loads of different things. But for me, it was always the crew morale and the crew mm. partying and, the, and the, the, the whole community on board was amazing. There was one time I, that stands out to mind at the moment where... Yeah. 
um, myself and my best friend Kenny and, and my lifelong friend Kenny, we got to blow the ship's whistle sailing out of Sydney Harbour mm-hmm. on the 2004 World Cruise. Mm-hmm. And it was an epic evening because it was actually Pride in Sydney. Yeah. So you had the whole of Pride. In 2004. Up, yeah. Sa- wow. Sailing out yeah. of Sydney. And we were up on the bridge, yeah. the QE2, and mm. we blew the ship's whistle sailing out of the harbour. It was epic. Yeah. That's amazing. It was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> And it was epic. It was Fantastic. just one of the epic moments yeah, I've had. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. A lot of, lot of brilliant times, uh, but that was one that stands out. So like. many. But one, yeah, exactly. Mm. Exactly. I mean, it's hard to encapsulate nearly a decade of uh, emotions, feelings, heart, uh, blood, sweat, and tears, mm. or whatever it may be. Um, is there... Um, well, actually, on the on the on the on the other side of that, is there anything um, that you would advise advise anyone else not to do with it, uh, not to do this kind of thing? In the sense, like, um, was there times where you really doubted having to be there? I mean, everything is viewed in you know pleasant, uh, you know, rosary glasses. But if you look back on it, um, well, I guess it is more pleasant purely for the fact that you went through it. But is there really times where you really turn around and said, not for a fault of the company, not fault of your manager, or maybe it was, or either or, or maybe a fault of your own, or a fault of staff, or whatever, maybe. But we have to turn around to the other side as well. What is it about ship cruises that will, that you would tell newlings mm-hmm. to actually stay away from? As in like, okay, do a, do a cruise or two. But don't stay on for years. It's harmful. Is it? Is it the tax free money? Is it the partying? Is it the the not getting on shore? Is it the is it the the lostness in the international environment that you're around? Whatever it may be, what's your negative side of it? Well, I suppose the one thing that I felt really difficult to deal with when I came off the ship after nine yeah. years was I was I was really institutionalized. Um, you're living in a very small confinement. You are uh, working with a lot of the same people. Yeah. You get on each other's nerves. Yeah. There's a lot of that. Um, you're in and out of ports. You do a lot of immigration. You're standing in queues in the morning to do immigration for a lot of U.S. ports that we used to go into. Plus, there's a lot of public health, which is the biggest thing on a cruise ship. Yeah. Because you have, I'm sure you see in the press, a lot of norovirus, which which hits mm, a lot of yeah, cruise yeah. ships. Yes. And a lot of crew and passengers get sick. They can't go ashore. And it's happened maybe, I'd say, three or four times when I was on the ship. Yeah. And that's pretty heavy going. And there's mm. times where you're kind of going, oh, my God, this is, I've had enough. And I just can't do this anymore. But you have mm. to keep going. Working at sea, a lot of people think it's, oh, you've been to all these beautiful countries, you've seen all these beautiful places. Yeah. But a lot of the time, you're seeing it from a window. Mm. You know, you're seeing maybe, uh, like for Mauritius, for example, like I said earlier, yeah. you're looking out at the port from a window because you're working lunch while a lot of your crew members, friends, <laughs> colleagues... So you're just sitting there going... Yeah, you're looking, you're looking out at a beautiful... Fuck all Yeah, exactly. You're looking out at a beautiful <laughs> sandy beach with the yeah, most amazingly yeah, yeah, yeah. blue water in the world. Yeah. You're going, shit, I can't get ashore today. I uh, know. Do you know yeah. what I mean? And maybe the next time you go for a port, so you put in for your request that you want to go ashore in this port. Most of ports, you're either on or off. Mm-hmm. That's that's the way it worked. Um, yeah. And either you're a port manning you, which means that you have to have a skeleton crew on, on board in case there was any emergencies, in case there was a fire yeah. or something like that. And you're heavily trained in, in boat drills, fire training. Mm-hmm. And to this day, I still have that in me. I know yeah. I know how yeah. to yeah. man a, a fire drill. and I know how to put out a fire. And, and it's Good. heavily drilled in me. Yeah. There, I never really looked at it as a negative. It was tough going, but I was in my early 20s leading up to when I turned 30. And it was it was a, a part of my life where I loved every second of it. And mm. I always made sure that even though times were could be tough and times could be hard for me, I always went, I'm at sea. This is I'm on the best ship in the world. I'm yes, on the QE2. Yes. And I always embraced that. So I would only look at it from a point of view that if anybody yes. ever wanted to do it, yes, go do it. Go experience it. Go live it. Go have the best time of your life doing it. 
you know so that's the way i would look at it totally agree totally agree it, it was um it was a dream i i i didn't have earlier on um i went in, into the hotel industry whatever because it all suits let's just take it for the the cliched reason of i like serving or helping people or whatever it's, mm-hmm. it's the same bullshit reason fucking you must just get into it but the thing is we did mm-hmm. we got into it we did what we needed to do uh i ended up in a um a recession which uh, recession and also a lock uh, that prevented me from uh moving outwards pretty for the fact mm-hmm. that i couldn't uh move outwards otherwise i could have moved up uh, in position mm-hmm. but besides that um still being um a yeah well, banqueting level person in uh, the hotel that I was and with a you know a large good team that we had um it was it was tough it was hard but we still kept at it that's yeah. the thing and a lot of people and the thing is like you you keep going at it that's mm-hmm. that's the whole interesting thing about it you keep going at it whereas other people are kind of like yo that shit's played out because you know what whenever you need stuff to be done um this job ain't going to help you or whatever you know and now we're going to go on to where and how we met all right okay um i had uh been um working as night porter and um bit of security and this that and whatever in a, in a local hotel and so you know bullshit kind of stuff <laughs> um and then worked as a, a fucking lower lease and street not like uh, uh, yeah but i'm not going to say the names of the the place that i've been at and there's been a few um until my stepdad actually got me into this uh, night porter job and that's where i got into the hotel bit and i was good at it don't mm-hmm. get me wrong i was fucking good at you that's enjoyed why your night i actually stuff. enjoy it man i had fucking complete control but i was so I was so anal about everything. I had to make sure. I mean, the thing is, I think there was like 18 rooms. Oh, really? And sometimes there was no one staying there. But me, like some fucking idiot, I, was, I made sure everything was hoovered and I made sure the bar was wiped down. And it was in a, it's in Court Town. Wow. <laughs> in, in, in Wexford. So I made sure everything was done. But that's got me into the, the, the root of the hotel industry. And it has served me well. And I, I, it did serve me well. And I, I did go, uh, do a good job. Now, the point that I'm trying to get at now is the hotel industry or <laughs> well, well, whatever I saw and um, went through in the hotel industry with all its ups and downs and uh, positivity. Fucking hell, man. There's not many industry, maybe apart from security, um, in civilian life, by the way. Mm-hmm. Um, it, uh, security... But f- God damn, the shit I had to see and go through just to do my job. And, ugh, everything. It was unbelievable. I went through it 10 years. I came out of it and I said, boom, I got a new job. Everything is all fine. Mm-hmm. I now look back and say, wow. I If someone had told me at the time, you can get a better job with whatever you have now. Absolutely. You could have a better future. Yeah. But at the time, I would have said, yeah, but I like people. I like serving people. I like, you know, helping people. And I yeah. like, you know, being of service. Um, so, yeah, that probably wouldn't have worked. But I tell you one thing. What the service industry trains people to do is beyond belief. It's beyond belief. I agree. I totally agree. You now have, over the last couple of years, uh, gone through some exceptional... Um, position changes mm-hmm. uh you've gone through uh through some uh, okay on one position uh you might be higher but your actual tasks are lower mm-hmm. if that makes any sense yeah absolutely yeah. yeah but on some jobs uh your your rank will be let me just put it bluntly by the way yeah your rank will be lower but your responsibilities were way higher mm-hmm. which is higher but which is the usual standard you have gone through a lot we met in college all of us, um, the whole bunch of us, went to uh, get ourselves qualified in the hotel industry. Well, for I so for me, I came back off the QE2 in 2006. Mm-hmm. And I was at home. And I'm like going, where do I turn now? What am I going to do now? Yeah. And I always had it in me to go back to college. I really wanted to go back to college. I really wanted to go to college. And 
edu- re-educate myself because yeah. from living a sea life, you you do live in a very institutionalized situation. You're living w- you're living within the the cruise industry. You're learning about the cruise industry. You're learning about a travel life. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, you're not learning a management style. You're not learning um, how to manage people. There's lots of things you don't know. But the thing is, you learned all that through work without anyone turning around and saying, by the way, now you're going to be managing. Now you're going to be doing this. Now uh, all of a sudden you just get bumped into the shit yeah. and you're like, what the fuck? I just exactly. woke up this morning. I just had cornflakes. And all of a sudden, you and I this. didn't, And I didn't know the whole aspects of management or anything like that i just yeah. got on with it as best i could with what i knew from what i did in the past yes like because i worked I, w- I was a waiter when i joined the ship um and i was a waiter for um two contracts then i and because it because of the class system on the qe2 i worked in a lower class restaurant so i had to do my f- my contract there Okay. Then I was moved up to the Queen's Girl, which had been the highest yeah. contract, highest level of service. So yeah. you're talking white glove service there. You're talking caviar. Oh, yeah. You're talking uh, Chant Rossiter. I'm not sure if you're familiar with it. It's a learning how to roast. So I had oh, to, yeah. Uh, at the table roast. Yeah, uh, so yeah, learning yeah, yeah, how yeah. to flambe. Yeah. So I learned all that. I was taught all that. Ooh, Gertman J. Uh, yeah, Gertman, yeah, all that yeah, kind of that stuff. Shit, yeah. um, which was an amazing <laughs> experience. Then I was in the Queen's Girl. Then I was down in the Princess Girl, which would have been a lower, a second lower level restaurant. Yes. And I was there for five years. Mm-hmm. And that's where I learned my Chanta Rossiter stuff and yes. my caviar service and different things which would be menial to a lot of people out there but I know how to serve caviar properly so if you ever get caviar mm. call me over I'll serve it to you properly <laughs> see there you go uh, that was actually a, a hidden intention within this episode Cat and myself were talking about <laughs> like, alright we need to talk about some uh, subjects here and there because you know we need a guideline on it we could have done a introductory episode yo you know me this is Cat Cat like stuff all good yeah, Out we go, you know, and uh, you know, just chill, Cheers. have a drink. Everyone goes to sleep. Oh yeah, Cheers. let's clink on that. <laughs> but we did actually uh, <laughs> hark back on it, and we, I was like, all right, you know what though? What we do need uh, two points as a guideline to <clears throat> excuse me guide the conversation. Mm-hmm. But um, no, cat uh, said no. Let it free. Uh, let it flow. We'll start off with who I am and what I am in terms of my history and because our you know industries yeah. matched Absolutely. and our friendship uh, based our friendship is based on that history uh, we had to let it flow so I do actually and I will actually dedicate this episode for the service industry staff yes as a matter too. of fact right we were kind of like ah, what do we do to everybody Ca- exactly every person that's ever worked in it Cat has so many likes. Um, nobody wants to hear about my shit, but Cat has so many likes, so many music tastes. We and th- we're gonna get into that at some stage mm-hmm. or another. That's for show. Yeah, she has music history. Um, but I'm telling you, we <laughs> we did not want to get into it all at the beginning. But I tell you what, we will dedicate this episode to service industry staff Everybody. on land, in the air. Or on the sea. Yeah. Right? To everybody out there. Because right. we all love every We love. And, you know, the more I think about even now as a, as a customer going into a restaurant or a bar, I appreciate everybody that serves me. And I, because I've done it for so many years. You've done it for so many years. You you learn how to appreciate <laughs> it. Even though. Well, hell yeah. Even though there's times where you're kind of going, oh, the service is slow. But. That's not the point. It's the point is that somebody is working their asses off to make their money, to, to pay their yes. rent or whatever it may be, to, to serve you, me, the next person beside us in a bar or a restaurant and stuff. And I appreciate everything. Exactly. I do, Shane, exactly. No, no. Uh, really, I do have a, have a big and bleeding heart for uh, the service and energy staff. But on the other hand... Uh, we have become quite critical. We might end absolutely. up absolutely. <laughs> that's one. Might, that's we one might, side we need you to go into. If we, if we, if we see shit going down, 
in the back area, we might hear it even. You know, you hear chefs shouting at each other, know, or whatever yeah. it may be, and you're kind of sitting or whatever. But as a matter of fact, though, well, now here I am on the customer side of it. That has nothing to do with you. I go in, I pay money, mm-hmm. I expect service without anything else. I just want service. But the thing, the difference is here is that you can empathize with the staff because even though you're paying oh, the, no. the money, you can yes. empathize with the fact yes. that, okay, they're under pressure here. You can see the under yes. pressure. You can understand where they're coming from. So you're a bit more lenient. You are a little bit more lenient. You're a little bit, but you still expect. But, exactly. But you are leaning back. You might, I don't know, invite your parents or whatever mm-hmm. it may be. And you are leaning back. You recommended a place mm-hmm. and you're hanging back and uh, shit goes down. And yes, if there is a fucking five minutes play, Jesus Christ. We're not, we're not complaining about that. But if there is all of a sudden a hold up where you can see that there is an issue mm-hmm. going on with logistics, then you're like, then you're like, no, you know what? This is not what I paid for. Yeah, exactly. This yeah. is not what I paid for. So regardless of whether I understand what you're doing, mm-hmm. you should keep your shit together. That's yeah. what I had to do. Even oh, under, under shit circumstances. And I totally agree with what you're saying. Exactly. I totally agree So you have to remember the customer at the end of it, you know. But, Kat, uh, let's get on to... Um, sorry, I'm just going to have to make a computer... Technical adjustment. difficulty. See if we don't look as pretty without the light. Now we do. All right. Now, um, Kat, you are going to be schooling us big time in terms of uh, music. Tell mm. us about your um, passion and love of music. Since I've known you, um, you've always been um, an advocate of all types of music mm-hmm. and new music especially mm-hmm. regardless of what generation but lately over the last what year and a half no two and a half years mm-hmm. actually now that I think back on it you have been to some random ass gigs <laughs> and we're yeah. talking about everything Big you, time. You, you, you could say you you would have been old school um, just to grossly put it out, uh, not grossly sorry uh, yeah no grossly in yeah. the sense of in me- uh, unmeasured um Old school punk or whatever it may be, um, London Underground, mm-hmm. that kind of stuff. But l- in the last couple of years, when I see you on your Facebook, you've been to some random ass gigs, man. Like really yeah. random. I, I'm a massive music fan. I've always been a music fan. My and I'll put it down to the beginnings of my yeah. music loves is is my influence is from my brother at the end of the day because we used oh, to yeah. listen to. Oh, a lot of radio stuff in the 80s. And we used to ra- listen to Radio Luxembourg. And my brother used to tape a lot of stuff like we all did when we were kids. Um, tape stuff yeah. on cassettes. I'm sure my age now. But my brother was a massive influence on my music um, styles. He used to give me a yeah. lots of cassettes like Led Zeppelin. And mm-hmm. when I was eight, eight now, like my nephew is eight now. So my brother used to give me, like, he gave me ACDC to listen to. He gave me Led Zeppelin, Elton John, loads of different music artists to listen to at that age. So that's how my music developed. Then we listened to the likes of Radio 2, yeah. 2FM, which it is now. Um, Tony Fenton, who I adore, who's sadly no longer with us. Yeah. Um, and then I started developing my own music taste. I used to listen to, I was listening to The Doors when I was 11. And and it, th- those are pro- prominent sort of times in my life where I kind of changed my music direction. I went through lots of different phases. Yeah. I went through lots of different things. And my music is m- a passion for me. And I also sing and I also would love to have been a singer. Um, maybe still can do it, but um, music is a passion of mine. And I love music history. I love learning about it. I am not maybe into the whole hip hop side that you would be into. <laughs> however, yeah. you, so your 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 this whole knowledge of hip hop would be <laughs> would be, you know, pretty pretty awesome. Like you know, yeah. while I wouldn't have that knowledge. No, this you know? is this is what you need. This is what you need. You need balance. You need yeah. you need um, 
Yeah, exactly. You need, you need a scarborough of balance. I'm one of those people that knows all every 80s lyric of every 80s song going. But if you ask me about something that's pretty new now, would I know it? No. Well, I tell you, man, we we talk shit about mumble <laughs> rap, man. Oh, then, yeah, the thing you is, know all your rap stuff, th- man. No, we, we know some hip-hop bits and pieces, but you know what? We need to sit together and go through mumble rap. It's hilarious. <laughs> I love it. It is fucking amazing. That'd be awesome. Literally. I, actually, I'm not going to make a joke about it now. We'll leave it for another episode. <laughs> okay, it's, it's another that episode. It's daft. Okay, as soon as we cut this off, uh, I will show you some... Um, some the one thing rap. I will say is that there's a lo- there's there's so much music out there that's... So, the, the music industry is so changed now compared to when we were growing up. Like, you had to... Like, when I was a kid, I had to save up and buy a cassette, buy a single... The music industry is so changed now. Uh, music is so easy to access now. And mm. I don't think it's as regarded as deeply as maybe it would be maybe 20, 30 years ago. And I feel very strongly about that. You know, I think it's the, the more newer artists that are out there trying to make their way in the world is a lot harder. So you have the social media mediums like Twitter and Facebook and stuff like that. And there's a lot of artists, unsigned artists, that I will listen to, I will tweet about, I will even blog about, and mm. just to give them their their voice. And that's what the music industry has become now. It's it's become a very different way of listening to music. Well, Kat, you're 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 keeping an eye on a uh, medium which has potential, or mm. you're keeping on on a genre that has potential. <laughs> David and myself have been talking about something. I even had... Uh, it was so shit. I'm sorry, but it was so shit. I had forgotten about it. I will send you a link. We will look at uh, We will look at it at my PC mm-hmm. now once we are done this. Mm-hmm. It's unbelievably crap. <laughs> but I, I don't know how else to say it. But the thing is, these guys um, come out with some rubbish. And then on SoundCloud, they start to rake up these four yeah. hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds, 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 hundreds and then they start mumbling hundred 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 raps, <laughs> yeah. And then they all of a sudden through SoundCloud, SoundCloud by yeah. the way, which is a company which um, it's huge. I think only no, but a month and a half they had financial difficulties. I mean, they oh, were really? about to close down. What am I thinking of? Is it SoundCloud? Anyway. Either or of the, um, the whatever medium cloud company, be. whatever it was. But yeah. That's and then they get signed by some fucking, I don't know who the fuck they are. There's some Vice documentaries out there. And the thing is, I don't know how, like, I'm appreciative of everything. Mm-hmm. Show me new stuff. Yeah, I have no too. problem. Does it sound good? Does it feel good? It, are the rhymes good? Is the lyric good? Mm-hmm. Is is there uh, a meaning? Is there whatever? But one, I can't even. No, I'm sorry, man. This, this is, <laughs> okay, sorry for all you podcast listeners. This does not make sense to you. This is so shit. Oh, we know. I, and the thing is, I can't pull up a sample right now. But it's just literally. <laughs> yeah, literally. Yeah, and this is That's a Shane's first single, by the way. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Boom. Boom. On SoundCloud. <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay. I'm just going to pull it off and just say it's ridiculous. It's mm-hmm. ridiculous. But I do appreciate the fact that uh, in this modern day and age, you can bring forward whatever music, information, book reading, poetic shit you want to do. Yeah. Do it, man. Do See, it. See, the internet's given the internet's given everybody a voice. Do you know what I mean? Whether you're an mm. artist, whether you're whatever yeah. you want to be, and when it comes to music, everybody that's out there that either plays or plays a cover or sits and learns the guitar or sings a song, yes, everybody has a voice now, and rightly so. We all should have that voice out there. It's just the music industry so changed with album sales and media sales and stuff like that. It's it's just a different way of listening to music. I have uh, an app on my phone that I can stream whatever I like yeah. music-wise. 
while before years ago I'd have to go to HMV and buy the CD no, you know yeah, it's yeah, so yeah. changed now and, and, and artists re- rely but on the likes of ticket sales for concerts yes. and so that's another whole subject but, to get into but this is something I want to talk to you about maybe mm. in um, our first episode together mm-hmm. our first official episode because I'm not quite too sure about this maybe I'm just making assumptions but SoundCloud has no other affiliation as such no right I, I do need to show you the clip mm-hmm. that I'm talking about. Mm-hmm. But if they're over, I don't know, 400,000 or whatever per day or whatever mm-hmm. it may be or uh, per month or per year or uh, lifetime uh, views, then they get start um, getting record deals and whatnot. But this is on a platform that's entirely free. Yeah. Right? In inverted commas mm-hmm. as such. Apart from their adverti- advertising revenue. That changes the game again. Oh, absolutely. And this is it. But it seems to be that it is these sub, sub, sub genres and sub genres of sub genres within certain states of states in America and the sub genres because um, is, you know, pretty hot there, wherever yeah, it is. Exactly, wherever it is. <laughs> but they get 400,000 views already and some record company is willing to do it. So we need to talk about this. Mm-hmm. We actually need to talk about this with David as well. Like the rise, the rise of the new artists on social media and whether the likes of EMI or the likes of whatever, Sony, BMG Sony whatever the big, them, yeah. are like, are they listening to it? Are they not? Are they taking it into consideration? Because at the end of the day, the streams on SoundCloud and Twitter and whatever social media medium you want to use, mm. if you're going to get your stuff out there heard, there's loads of places to get it heard. Do you know what I mean? There's loads of places out Can there almost, to get it yeah. without a record contract. Yes. yes. The only reason is that a lot of it's manufactured now. A lot of pop music, like it always was manufactured, but it's yeah. more manufactured. The likes of the X Factor started back tonight. Do you know this is all manufactured? Is that pop. shit going on? Yeah, still? that started back tonight. Wait, was that last year? Or th- was that shit still going on? Yeah, or it did started it again. Last year? The new series started tonight. Hey, look, man. As long you as Simon so Cowell makes money, man. Exactly. No so, so shit. this is where he's getting his sales on downloading and streaming and you know media attention loving it yeah and a lot of artists there's a lot of artists out there that ha- find it really hard to get their stuff streamed online so this is why they've got to go out and play they've got to go out and do the gigs mm. go to the small gigs do all that kind of stuff and and this is where they get heard so it's not it's 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 either up there for the likes of Simon Cowell and all his artists but down there for the likes of the small artists that are trying their hardest to actually writing the tracks, not being manufactured. There's a there's a huge difference there, and and social media has really changed that in my opinion. Exactly, exactly. It's a it's a hard line to cross. Absolutely, it's a hard line to really, jump. Really, really, it is. It's a it's a it's a, it's a um, yeah. Well, an unpaid Mexican border to jump. Yeah, look, yeah. I'm no expert on on the subject, but I know wh- I know what I know. <laughs> I love how you dodged that. <laughs> I know that I'm no expert no, on the subject, but, but the, I know. No, no, but the point but is, I know, but the point but I know is, where you're... it is entirely difficult because I have a uh, friend and a colleague of mine, and um, I I know some of his band members or whatever, and um, you know, the phenomenal musicians mm-hmm. each Absolutely. by their own, but gone are the days of having to. Not that I'm saying that that's a good way of doing mm-hmm. it. But you learn a lot. But having to tour continuously. Exactly. With and nothing. Just yeah. your van. Your, your, I don't know, you're fucking peeing out the window and all that kind <laughs> of shit for months on end. And But this is not the 80s. This is not the 90s. This is not the early 2000s or whatever. This is now. Mm-hmm. And these guys are incredibly talented. Mm-hmm. And, and the only distribution as such that they have is through iTunes mm-hmm. is through uh, Deezer is through exactly Spotify yeah, through, and they, they, they've won some um, high accolades of other um, online websites mm-hmm. or whatever and that kind of makes me wonder it not makes me wonder this is simply how it's going to be yeah that's the way it's it is it's not like right? everyone goes and picks up their LP plays it and then goes makes a judgement on it and then writes into Rock and Roll magazine exactly you see the thing is as well uh, for me growing the Rolling up Rolling Stones yeah sorry, and magazine. the thing is for me, growing up in the 80s um, and the 90s and having, well, I was lucky up at home in Donegal. Uh, I had the, the British channels growing up when I was a kid. Mm. We had Top of the Pops. 
<laughs> you know that that first evening best TV show ever was was Top of the Ninety Five at that stage. They did the, like you're talking from the early eighties. I was watching yeah. Top of the Pops, and it was like the only medium for you to listen to new music. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So it was the top forty charts. They would play all the artists. They'd have them in the studios and stuff like that. That was the only way to listen to music when I was a kid, mm. or actually on the radio as well, and trying mm. to get the, on Irish radio and stuff, or listening to. I was really, we were really lucky because where I come from, where I live, we used to get all the British BBC channels. We used to get loads of different radio channels as well. So we yeah. were very open to a lot of different music. However it's that was a nice that was the old school way of doing it now it's just anybody can put up a video on youtube anybody can yes. put up a video of yeah. them playing a guitar writing their own song you know and and it's just about look at justin bieber yeah. look at the way he was picked up by radio and and uh record companies because he just po- look, kept posting his stuff on youtube you know I think if, they're good, they're good. If, they're, if they're good they're good yeah exactly. i mean you know but there's so many talented artists out there and amazing guitar players, drummers, keyboard players, writers that have to be session musicians for, for bands and stuff like that that are touring. You but know, the thing that. is, uh, but, but the amazing thing is, um, um, because the environment has changed, it's like, whereas where, I don't know, it used to be a bassist or whatever, not that I'm talking from the experience of mm. a bassist, but... I can only assume beforehand you had to audi- if, even if you did you had to audition or hang around mm. with guys then you had to play with some guys or whatever it may be but um, I don't know if it works now like I think right the, now, market is, but the market's become market more competitive has been changed. Yeah. but you can turn around and put up a short clip of you dum, 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 like, dum, a, dum, like dum. an audition you know just do your audition yeah. Whatever, and then do people your rhymes can, again. I guess. Do that. Do that nice rhyme again that you did, right. of that guy, them guys you were listening to. <laughs> beep, 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 beep. Do you know the rhymes you did a few seconds ago? Right. Of the stuff that you were talking about. Yeah. So like these are guys who are just putting this stuff out there. No, but that's the whole point. Yeah. yeah. So you've got yeah yeah. The aud- maybe the audition um, level has changed or whatever. Maybe not for hardcore bands, but maybe for the 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 quick ones who need a replacement or whatever. Mm-hmm. I don't. Know. I'm. I don't play an instrument. I don't live in the in the uh, band scenes. Yeah. Uh, but this is this is where. It's but things like, have changed. Yeah, things absolutely. have changed rapidly, absolutely. very rapidly, and um, some of the guys who are still connected are still living by the old way, or whatever. But. Say like new seventeen, mm-hmm. sixteen, seventeen, eighteen year olds now coming in, because everyone else at our age or anyone mm. un- like even halfway through age are already connected. They know people. They're like, yeah, but fuck that internet shit. I can just call so and so, and he can send me somebody that knows. But now, right coming out of school now, you you know you're seventeen. You're an amazing guitar player, but your head is full of shit <laughs> because you're fucking seventeen. But that's a 17-year-old. Do you know what I mean? I think as well, yeah. can I just mention about the fact that because of you, where you and I live, we live in the most unbelievable cultural city in Ireland, Galway City. Mm-hmm. The amount of music, the amount of gigs, the amount of new artists that are played here all the time. And if you put it down to the amount of artists that are absolutely massively famous here, the likes of Ed Sheeran, Snow Patrol... Uh, Kasabian there's so many artists that are massive now that have come to play here in Galway because Galway has one of the most difficult judgmental crowds ever and we're very blessed here in Galway to have the amount of people that come and visit here and that's why my love of music is even more enhanced because I would go and see different artists I would go and see different people that are out there that are unsigned and yeah. give them a chance, like in the Rose Sheen Dove and different places like that and different bars like that in town. Even even on the street. There's yeah. even bands that play on the street on Saturday trying to sell their CDs and different things like that. We're very we're very enhanced here in Galway. This is one of the most cultural cities for music, mm. I think, in the world, really. Because everybody gives it a chance here. We're very open-minded about music here. And a lot of artists do make it quite big because of them coming to play in Galway and it, it, it's to me it's it's amazing to see so many different people come here just to try just to give it a go 
Okay, I've played in Galway. That's true. You know, you wouldn't get it in Limerick. You you wouldn't get it in a lot of other cities around Ireland. You wouldn't get it in maybe wherever. But at the mm-hmm. same time, it, we're very blessed here. That's all I have to say about that. It's just that we're very blessed to see a yeah. lot of different artists here. And I do think a lot of hip hop artists, a lot of, a lot of so many different genres out there should come to here and, and play because there is huge audiences for it here. When we Live audiences had, that I'm talking about. Yeah, Live. we and we have had some amazing audiences here. But you know what? Um, to bring it down to uh, after quite a long introduction. And yes, whatever, thank you. Cat, it's been really um, great. Quite simply, and we'll put it out there. Um, we, you know, this is a quite an ambitious uh, project for us to run the podcast. We're trying to do it at a production level that is hopefully beyond usually at the stage that we're at now. <laughs> and um, But in turning around and doing all that we have signed up to everything we have logged into everything and here we are for everything and every time we post something and it spreads across it now i sound like george huck i oh, have no. an opinion and i have to do something about it. but <laughs> that it, it, anyway says that so that's another um, time exactly now uh, the point is um the whole reason we have brought uh katrina on board is for her to take over our uh, social media. And it has a very simple reason. We, A, we suck at it. B, (laughs) we don't spend time at it. Right now, right now. Because there's a lot going on. We're we're trying to boot something up. We're trying to bring it on. Sorry, Shane, let me just interject there. I've been trying to explain to you what a hashtag is. And you just are like, what? What the fuck? Do you know, can like, you, what's a you, hashtag? Can you smoke it? <laughs> no. <laughs> so no, it's. But I didn't. Really, yeah, because <laughs> a colleague of mine turned around. He goes, um, um, you know, your Facebook posts get posts on Twitter, and I was like, yeah, well, yeah, because I know that our Facebook is connected to Twitter. And he goes, he goes, can you put hashtags in, please, yeah. man? That contextualizes your tweets. And I was like, but I'm posting on fucking Facebook, man. God damn it, a. We're holding back until we get everything leveled out. This is why we have here Katrina. She I'll will, give it a go. Exactly. She's going to bring um, yeah, she's gonna bring shit on track for us. Uh, yeah, well, thank you very well, much. Well, if I brought you to the world of hashtags tonight, Shane, then this is like the best thing ever for you to learn. Hashtag Shane. Hashtag rum boys. Hashtag everything. You hashtag everything now. Even when you're talking normally, hashtag, everything's a hashtag now. Everything's a hashtag, apparently. Yeah. But, okay, let's go get the picture taken now. Picture. Oh, my God, that looks like a playroom. Is it? <laughs> okay. <laughs> this way. <laughs> All right, okay, let's do it that way. All right. There you go. Cool. The picture taken, and uh, there'll be lots of hashtags for that shit, man. What's up? Hashtag playroom. <laughs> you look fantastic. Thank you. So right. do you. All right. Thank you for having me with you guys. Fantastic. Now we're um, reaching our um, episode time. We're going to chill here now for a minute. And uh, what we want to do is. Thank you, first of all, for listening. And thank you for sticking for so yeah, long. Thank even you. through the previous hiatus. All right. We had at least three to four weeks, no material. And um, for you guys, yeah, you do a download and then wonder what the fuck just happened. Because that was four or five weeks ago. Um, all good in the hood. We had a hiatus. This is a introductory cover episode because yeah. we need to make sure that you know who Katrina is and uh, besides all that um, yeah we're still here we're still recording and I'm so and delighted to be part of this this is amazing and thank you so much for letting me be part of this I'm it's so glad that you're I'm here. so honoured and I will push up your media attention a big style I can't wait for you to hashtag <laughs> oh, I'll hashtag baby and you have got such an amazing <laughs> voice it's amazing thank you also. I know. I, I just can do that lovely deep voice. That. Yeah, I've got that really deep voice going on there. You know, cool. cool. Hashtag yeah, that so shit. <laughs> 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 All 
All right, guys. Um, yeah, <laughs> keep <laughs> keep stuck with it. Um, when I say subscribe to whatever and however everything. and whatever thing you want at Random Urban or Red and uh, uh, what the fuck? Random <laughs> Rob Boys, yeah. No, it's random urban memory. Oh, it's the random urban memory. See, I've got to learn all this stuff as well myself. I know, I know, I know. And I fucked it up on a live show. <laughs> anyway, the point is, r- whatever medium you look for, just type in random urban memory. Yeah, give it a go, guys. You will find it. Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, whatever it may be, you will actually go and find it there. Yeah. Especially on YouTube. Go like Boom. that shit. Just do it. You too, baby. Nine. All right. So, thanks for supporting. Thanks for supporting. Uh, and thank you for having locally. me. Locally. And, uh, yeah. And it's been lovely to talk cat. to you guys. And thank you for listening. It's been amazing. Yeah. It's so been great to have her on. And as a matter of fact, I didn't think it would be this long. I thought it was going to be a quick, yeah. hello, how are you? This is a cat. Nice I to can't meet you. I can't say anything. But we've been, like, talking loads. You don't understand how interesting this lady fucking is. <laughs> right? That's just cool. Or this guy. The amount of stuff that he can talk about. It's going to be awesome. Yeah. Future episodes with, with Shane is going to be amazing. So yeah. it's going to be really good. Cool. Yeah. But shit you can't put on. <laughs> Love ya. You managed to listen to the Rum Boys talk on random urban memories. Just like and subscribe where you can on all platforms.